On today's episode of Chicago Bears Now, I'm going to take a look at five free agents that Ryan Poles could sign before training camp. Plus, for every player we look at, we're going to look at some other players at that position that Poles could explore. So really, it's more like 15 to 20 free agents. My name is Harrison Graham. Before we get into all of that, what is your favorite pizza joint in Chicago? I like testing the audience every couple of months, kind of gauging the waters from what you guys uh, think. Are you a Lou Malls guy? we got producer Patrick Seatman, who hosts the Bulls Report, tragically is our Vikings host as well, but he's well entrenched in the Chicago pizza scene. Seeps, what's your go-to place? Mine's got to be Giordano's, Harry. A little typical, I feel like most Chicago fans will say that as well, but I go Gio's. Let us know in the comments. I'm very curious to see what you guys think. And one of my buddies, he's going to Chicago soon. He was asking me, and I was like, let me get you a deeper dive from our audience on Bears now. So get those answers in. Okay, uh, let's start with the first free agent target here. Justin Houston, the uh, veteran edge rusher here, a player we've talked about quite a bit. And with all these players, we're going to take a look at their pro football focus grades from last year as well. Houston, uh, in 374 snaps last year, I think he played like 44% of the Ravens' defensive snaps. Graded out well, 74 overall, almost 72 pass rush. Uh, his run defense, uh, you know, uh, average to above average. 39 pressures, which uh, he only had 285 pass rush uh, reps, so that's a pretty good percentage. Uh, nine and a half sacks, like that's, that's capitalizing on the reps he got. And he's kind of at that stage in his career where he can come in, be a part-time pass rusher, hold his own against the run, and you can still play some of your younger guys who you're trying to evaluate, right? Like he's not going to play 70% of snaps, but 40 to 50% of snaps uh, give you, you know, seven to 10 sacks perhaps, because it seems like at this stage in his career, he's able to maximize more reps if he gets less of those reps. So I think that's the type of role he could play. And I think there's already several reasons to sign Justin Houston's number, Justin Houston. Number one, he knows Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus. Uh, played under Flus in Indianapolis for two years, uh, and obviously Ryan Poles was part of that front office that drafted him, and uh, he was in that front office throughout uh, his entire time in Kansas City when Houston was there through 2017 or 2018. Uh, experienced vet, uh, been around the block, can be a mentor. Uh, still very productive, like we just outlined. Uh, he's not going to play a crazy amount of snaps, but when he's out there, he can uh, do the job. And uh, I don't like he'll cost a ton. 34 years old. Uh, you might have to pay a million or two million extra than a contender because he would probably, a true contender, I should say, like a Super Bowl contender. But um, I still don't think that would be a crazy number, especially at this point in free agency. So the dots are there. He could fill a role for this team, and he's not going to take so many snaps where young guys can't get on the field. Are you in on Justin Houston? Type I for in or O for out. I want to know from you guys uh, when it comes to Justin Houston, in or out on the veteran pass rusher. Now, of course, there's several other free agent edge rushers. Yannick Ngakwe, um, probably the best pure pass rusher on the market, but he struggles against the run. I'm obviously very much in on that idea. Dwayne Smoot, who uh, is visiting the Ravens next week, a potential uh, Houston replacement there. Uh, Carlos Dunlap, who played last year with the Chiefs. Robert Quinn, who, of course, was with the Bears for a couple years before trading him. He's a free agent still. Melvin Ingram is still out there. So there's guys at the edge position uh, that are still available. Wanted to focus more in on Houston today, but uh, I would take any of these guys if I'm being completely honest. Okay, let's go to a tight end here now. Mike Michael Pruitt, uh, who's bounced around a little bit, but I kind of wanted to explore this position more because we've talked about a few guys in the last couple of months uh, at that tight end spot. But Pruitt is an interesting player in the sense that he graded out really well per PFF as kind of a part-time player last year for Atlanta. 76 overall, 81 receiving grade. He's a good blocker as well. Uh, graded out better as a pass blocker last year, but he's solid in that area. Had four touchdowns and limited snaps. I think that's pretty intriguing. Only 150 total yards. But again, when you look at what Chicago needs at this position, they just need that number three tight end. You don't have to come in here and you have 400 yards or anything crazy. Like, got Cole Komet, who's had back-to-back -back good seasons. You brought, it, brought in Robert Tunney who can be a good red zone threat. Uh, but you need that third guy. Chase Allen was on the practice squad last year. Jake Tonjes in and off out or on and off the 53-man roster last year. Uh, I would like to upgrade at that number three tight end. I think a guy like Michael Pruitt could do the job. Uh, he still remains available. And again, a player like that, vet minimum type of contract, not going to cost you 
<clears throat> much money whatsoever. Now, some other free agent tight ends, of course, Mercedes Lewis. Uh, I a strong advocate for him. He knows the offense. Excellent blocker experience. He's 38, but again, number three tight end. He would bring a lot to this team, I think. Cameron Brait, more of a receiving option, but if you want that third uh, player to be a receiving threat, he's out there. Max Williams kind of in the same boat. He's had some injury problems, so I'm a little bit lower on him, but Pruitt, Lewis, or Brait, I'd bring in any of the, those guys for sure to be my number three tight end. Subscribe to the channel because training camp is upon us. We're going to have news, rumors, daily updates, and a whole lot more. Keep you up to date with everything surrounding this football team as Bears football is finally back. So hit that subscribe button today, and we'll continue to keep you informed. Okay, uh, let's go to the cornerback position. Ronald Darby, who I actually don't think we've talked about at all this offseason, but he remains unsigned. Tore his ACL last year, but it was early in the season, so conceivably should be ready for week one uh, in limited action. Graded out pretty well last year, 71 overall, above average in coverage there. Run defense was great. Uh, you know, pass rush, I don't really care about that much for a corner. Uh, but his passer rating allowed when targeted, 66.9. Like, it's not like easy completions are coming quarterbacks' ways uh, when they throw the ball at Ronald Darby. Now, he is coming off that torn ACL, a little bit older. I think he's around 30 now. So, <clears throat> you know, legitimate concerns. But... A veteran who's played a lot has starting uh, caliber potential, and it gives you security, right, for a guy like Tyreek Stevenson and or Kyler G Gordon. Stevenson, a rookie, projected to be your second outside corner opposite of Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon, who had some moments as a rookie, finished pretty strong, but still some questions there as your nickel. Uh, Ronald Darby can play nickel or outside, and he gives you uh, that flexibility and experience and level of play that if he needs to start, he absolutely could do it. And he'd probably be a better CB4 than a guy like Kendall Vildor. So we'll see. The Bears have some intriguing depth at corner, but it's a lot of young guys, right? If you want a vet in the room, uh, Darby could be that guy. Some other guys out there, Marcus Peters certainly uh, experienced. Uh, Anthony Brown as well. Bryce Callahan, uh, Byron Jones, uh, Casey Hayward. Byron Jones kind of feels like his career is over, but there's some notable names out there and uh, some names I would be intrigued with if I was the Bears. Okay, week one, Packers, FGB. You know the drill. Get those shirts early and often. And hey, I'll tell you what, if you get one of these shirts, and rock one at training camp or at a game this year, send me a photo. We're going to put it on the show. Chatsports.com slash FGBs. FGB. 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 Get your F Green Bay shirts today and rock them between now and week one and, of course, on that opening Sunday. Okay, a couple more here. Dalton Reisner, who we've discussed a couple times, uh, veteran guard who graded out okay last year, much better as a pass blocker in Denver. That whole offense was just kind of a mess, uh, but only gave up three sacks, uh, had just one penalty and 15 games played for the Broncos. Now, let me be clear. <clears throat> if you sign Reisner, he will not start. Tevin Jenkins, Nate Davis, you're locked and loaded uh, at your guard positions. But he would be a huge upgrade as your like, backup interior guard guy. Uh, and uh, two, um, the flip side of that, he probably wants to start somewhere. So, like, I don't think the Bears would have a great chance of getting him unless they overpaid for a backup, but he's a vet. If Jenkins struggles on his move to left guard or if there's an injury, obviously, you'd feel comfortable putting him in there. He's a starting caliber guard. Uh, I think he'd rather ha have a chance to start somewhere, and I don't think that would be in Chicago, but maybe an injury occurs during camp, and if he's still available, I think that would make a lot of sense. Last one here is George Fant as the veteran uh, offensive tackle is actually visiting the Titans, and there are some reports that if all goes well, pretty good chance he'll sign with Tennessee because Nicholas petit Friere suspended for six games with the uh, gambling policy, so um, he could have a chance to start there at least early on in Nashville. Now, he did not play that well last year. I mean, you compare the last two years uh, – for pro football focus, I mean, he clearly was far better in 2021 when he actually played really well. Last year struggled quite a bit. Um, but I think for the Bears, in terms of what George Fant could provide, A, insurance, if Braxton Jones has a sophomore slump or if Darnell Wright isn't quite ready, hopefully that's not the case. Uh, but B, and probably more likely, you don't have a 
Great swing tackle option, right? Larry Borum, Alex Leatherwood. I don't feel good about either of those guys, if I'm being completely honest. I think offensive tackle is a position to keep an eye on throughout camp. Not necessarily for the starters. Obviously, we're all keeping our eyes on Darnell Wright, but backups. I think for the whole offensive line, we're more we're excited about the starting five, but guys get hurt. Like, I don't love the depth on this unit, so I would not be surprised at all if Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus identified that and brought in a vet or two. Some other free agent offensive linemen, Taylor Lewan, who looks like he's shed a lot of weight. I think he's mostly retired, but you never know. Jason Peters, he's old, but two years ago, he was the best Bears offensive lineman, and last year for the Cowboys, played pretty well in like a part-time role uh, at multiple positions. He's experienced, like you could do a lot worse for a backup. Eric Fisher, he's kind of in that Lawan category of kind of feels like he's half retired at this point. Michael Schofield, Gabe Jackson, a couple other interior options if the Bears want to go that route, but I'm keeping an eye on that swing tackle position. I think that's something to monitor. Okay, who is your top free agent target for the Chicago Bears? Let me know in the comments below. I think we're going to get a lot of Yannick Ngakwe's, Justin Houston's. Uh, that's where I'm at, too. The edge position, that's, that's certainly something that I think needs to be addressed, if not before training camp, at least before week one. All right, guys, appreciate you for tuning in to today's show. My name is Harrison Graham. We will see you guys next time. Bear down.